So before I start the video, I just want to warn you that some of the videos and audio recordings that I will show you are pretty disturbing and I only use them to raise awareness about the problems related to those videos and audio recordings. Twitch and other big live streaming platforms allow you to stream big events and gameplay to thousands of people from around the world. But unfortunately, sometimes horrible things are live streamed for thousands of people to see. Radiohead fans attacked during livestream. In 2016, a group of people got together to listen to Radiohead's new album at a record store in Turkey, Istanbul, when they were brutally attacked by a group of 20 men and it was all caught on Facebook livestream. In the following video of the incident, can you see how an angry man is running into the record store? The customers and employees then try to run out of the record store, but they are stopped by an angry mob that attacked them with pipes and glass bottles. The owner of the record store later said that the store was attacked because they played music and handed out alcohol during the holy month of Ramadan. Sasha Dean and Sons Fan In 2014, Nikki Elise and Shannon Scudden, also known as Sasha Dean and Sons Fan on Twitch, were livestreaming when all of a sudden they heard a loud bang. At first, they thought that it was the cat, but when Shannon went to take a look, two men kicked down the door to the apartment. You can then see how one of the armed men is searching through Nikki's room for things to steal, unaware that thousands of people are watching. The two robbers first thought that they broke into a drug dealer's apartment and they were expecting to find narcotics and guns. After realizing that they were in the wrong apartment, they told Nick and Shannon to go into the bedroom and lay down on the ground. They then went through the apartment looking for anything that they could sell. One of the robbers eventually left the apartment, but the other one wanted to stay and wait for the bank to open after Shannon told him that he had $20,000 in the bank. Then all of a sudden, the doorbell rings and the robber tells Nikki and Shannon to stay in the bedroom while he goes and opens the door. Nikki and Shannon can then hear how someone is screaming, get down on the ground, and they then realize that it is the police. Nikki later asked the police how they knew that they were in trouble, and the police told her that they got a call from Germany, saying that they were watching the live stream, and they then saw the man with the gun, and realized that they were in trouble. Antonio Perkins on June the 17th, 2016, Antonio Perkins was pronounced dead at Mount Sinai Hospital in Chicago after he was shot by an unknown man while out drinking with his friends. The police believed that Perkins was killed by a rival gang member and after retrieving his mobile phone, they saw that Perkins was live streaming on Facebook when the shooting happened. In the following video, Casey how Perkins is drinking and talking with his friends when all of a sudden gunshots can be heard and Perkins begins to run. The phone eventually falls to the ground and you can hear how people are screaming in the background. Joey Daddy 505 In 2016, Twitch streamer Joey Daddy 505 were live streaming Twitch when he all of a sudden cut off his video. Thinking that no one could see or hear him, he then began abusing his girlfriend. But Joey Daddy 505 forgot to turn off his microphone and his viewers could hear everything. So before I play the audio, I just want to warn you that it is pretty disturbing. And I also want to point out that abuse towards women or men are never acceptable. Joey Daddy 505 later said that he and his girlfriend had an argument and that she began talking about his father that recently passed away and that is why he abused her. Twitch later said that they had provided the identity of Joe Daddy 505 to the police. 
The French Teenage Girl In 2016, a 90-year-old girl livestreamed her final moments to around 1,000 people on Periscope. Before jumping in front of a train at a train station in France, the girl told the viewers that she had been raped by her ex-boyfriend and that he later published the pictures of the act on Snapchat. She also said the following, This isn't about creating a buzz, it's to get people to react, to open minds. I've reached a stage where I have no desire for anything anymore. Nothing gives me pleasure. Nothing gives me the strength to get up in the morning. What will happen is likely to be very shocking. The teenage girl then jumped in front of a train, ending her life. The following video doesn't show the death of the girl, but you can see when the girl is talking to her viewers and at the end of the video, can you see how a fireman picks up the mobile phone from the ground after her death? Il est trop tôt. Bon bref, du coup, je vais réexpliquer ce que j'ai dit avant. Euh, la vidéo que je vais faire là, que je suis en train de filmer, euh, n'est pas faite pour faire le buzz. Euh, elle est faite pour faire réagir les gens, pour ouvrir les gens. I wasn't planning on using the previous story at first, because I thought that it maybe was a bit too disturbing to include in the video, but after reading that one of her reasons for taking her own life was to get people to react and raise awareness about this problem, I decided to include it, to try to do just that. Thank you so much for watching, if you liked this video, please hit the like button to support my channel and subscribe for more videos, and if you want to support me even more, then can you head over to my Patreon page and donate as much as you want. Take care, and I will see you in my next video.